G'day guys, Marty here. You know, when dealing with refrigeration gases, we're beginning to rely more and more on the natural refrigerants, such as hydrocarbons or carbon dioxide. We're not talking about the gas that you might connect to your barbie on the weekend, but when talking about gas, safety should come to mind. These two refrigerants are very different to each other, and they should be probably treated differently as well. Basically, hydrocarbons are flammable, and carbon dioxide is highly pressurised, though while it's not flammable, it could still explode if you don't deal with it properly. So why are we turning to such gases? Steve Smith from Tafe New South Wales tells us why. There's overwhelming scientific evidence today pointing to the fact that man has had a major impact on our environment. One of the early issues identified was that of ozone and the depletion of ozone within our atmosphere. I suppose you would be aware, ozone protects our planet and us from the harmful effects of radiation from the sun. Many health issues are attributed to the loss of ozone within our atmosphere. Through the late 1980s, steps were taken to address that situation. They identified all of the harmful CFCs and through the 90s we saw the removal of all of the CFCs in order to, to protect the planet and the ozone. This brought a period of turmoil for our industry as the chemical manufacturers introduced a range of new refrigerants. Some of them blends, a word we had not been familiar with before. Each of these new refrigerants brought with them their own little specific problems and we spent many years coming to grips with them. As we moved through the 2000s, we dealt with those issues and we came to know and love these new refrigerants we now play with, R134A, R404A and a range of others. But the scientific community has come to realise there's another impact that our range of refrigerants have on our environment. These new refrigerants that have been developed, although ozone friendly, have very large carbon emission values, known as global warming potential. As a result of this, the Kyoto Protocol came to being, a worldwide drive to remove any man-made materials that unnecessarily add to the carbon emissions within our atmosphere. There is a move within many quarters of our trade to move back to the old original natural refrigerants, ammonia, carbon dioxide and the hydrocarbons. Many of you may not be aware, all of those three were used from the late 1850s right through to the 1920s and were only replaced by the so-called safe new refrigerants through the Second World War. With the reintroduction of these so-called new refrigerants come a range of issues that must be dealt with, particularly with regard to safety. The next step is to take a look at the safety issues revolving around the use of hydrocarbons and carbon dioxide as refrigerants. So even though this next generation of refrigerant gases does wonderful things for the environment and they're a powerful resource for keeping things really cold, well, we still need to take the time to understand them and in particular, how to handle them safely. Let's start with understanding how we should safely handle hydrocarbons by answering your most common questions. We'll get Warren Steele, a technical manager of food preservation and Ken Townsend, a technical service manager from Electrolux Home Products. Electrolux use hydrocarbons in their refrigerators, so these guys should be able to give us the insight that we need. What equipment can I recommend? Uh, no, no products that haven't been specifically designed for use with hydrocarbons can be retrofitted. Uh, no, no product can be retrofitted because they're not designed to take hydrocarbons. Okay. How do I identify what equipment contains hydrocarbons? All equipment using hydrocarbons should be clearly labelled in any area where you access the hydrocarbons. If it's not, treat it as if it is and follow all safety precautions. Uh, any product should be uh, labelled uh, correctly with the hydrocarbon uh, sticker. You can find these labels near the compressor compartment, the evaporator compartment or anywhere you access the refrigeration system. All equipment using hydrocarbons should be clearly labelled with either a R600A label or hydrocarbon label or should be clearly identified on the compliance sticker. What are the safety requirements when handling hydrocarbons? Handling hydrocarbons should be uh, serviced in a well ventilated area 
and there is unique equipment that must be used when using hydrocarbons. Always work in a well ventilated area. Um, make sure you're aware of your environment and others in your environment and that they are also following those procedures like no naked flames or ignition sources. How do I reclaim hydrocarbons from equipment? Uh, we don't actually recover, we actually will vent off out into the atmosphere through a tube through the system, out through the system. We don't currently recover or reclaim hydrocarbons. Uh, we prefer that it is either vented into a, into a safe area or actually burnt off. How do I store and transport hydrocarbon cylinders? Ventilation is very, very important. Uh, in storage, it should be always in a well ventilated area. And in, uh, in transportation, it should be transported in an open tray. Uh, we recommend you follow all standard procedures with handling any flammable gas cylinders um, and store it in a vented container or storage cabinet and make sure it's well labelled. Why use a flammable substance? Uh, because there's less volume, uh, it's more energy efficient and it's more vi environmentally friendly to the atmosphere. Uh, we use hydrocarbons in our refrigerators because it's, uh, it's less volume used, um, it's much more energy efficient and most importantly it's much more environmentally friendly compared to other refrigerants in the market.